Hi, we're coming to you from the National Jazz Museum in Harlem to kick off our Move and Groove virtual sessions. My name is Tressa, this is Courtney, and we are founders of Move and Groove Yoga. Move and Groove Yoga is a wellness initiative that seeks to build community through events focusing on music, movement, and meditation practices. We have been in partnership with the National Jazz Museum for over four years. They've helped us bring this wonderful experience to life by providing space and most importantly, musicians. This is a breath and movement practice for all bodies and all levels. Go at your own pace and honor yourself. So welcome to our virtual experience. 2020 has been um, an eventful year and we hope that you and your families are safe and well. Thank you to the museum and our lineup of teachers and musicians. We miss you dearly and can't wait to practice with you again in person. Until then, Grab a mat, clear a space, and enjoy. Namaste. Hi, my name is Courtney. Welcome to Moving Group Yoga. Thank you so much for practicing with us today. Thank you to the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, and a big thank you to Octavio Bunyi, who will be playing for us today. Go ahead and find a comfortable seat. We'll get started. I happen to be sitting in a cross-leg seat, but Whatever you find comfortable, you can have your legs out long, you can sit up on your heels. Find a place of ease where you're able to sit for a few moments. You can close or lower your eyes. And just take a moment here to notice your breath. Without any judgment, just notice how it feels, how it's moving through your body. Maybe how the air feels coming in and out through your nostrils. From here, we'll start to deepen our breath. Think about pulling your breath on the inhale way down into your belly and down to the base of your spine. And then on the exhale, traveling up through the length of your body and out through the crown of your head. Maybe imagine you can see your breath. Sometimes I'll visualize it as a beam of light. Try to match the length of the inhales to the exhale. And we'll keep this breath throughout our practice. Starting to add some movement to it. Sit up nice and tall. You can flutter your eyes open if you like. And on an inhale, Take the arms out wide, open through the heart, and on an exhale, round through the spine, wrap your arms around yourself. Inhale and take the arms out, lifting through the chest, and exhale to round, maybe opposite arm on top this time. So what we're doing, inhaling, is like that cat cat-cow movement through the spine you may do in yoga classes sometimes. With the added opportunity to embrace yourself. Last time, You'll stay here with the rounded spine, wrapping your arms around yourself. Give yourself a hug. And release. Let's take the arms up overhead. And on an exhale, release the right hand to the mat. 
really ground down through your left hip and start stretching out the left side of the body. And pull that shoulder back, look under the armpit, and breathe. Inhaling through center and taking it over to the other side. back through center and up and on your next exhale you'll take the right hand over to the left knee left hand comes behind you we're in a twist so as you breathe in sit up really tall and as you breathe out twist a little bit more you're here for a few breaths keeping that action of finding length on the in breath and a little more twist on the out Inhale to bring the hands overhead and exhale, twisting over to the other side. On the next exhale, you'll release that twist. And let's come over the knees on top. We're coming into our downward facing dog, so let's set up the hands, spread the fingers out nice and wide, press down into the fingertips, hands are shoulder distance apart, then you'll tuck the toes and lift the hips. And start to bring some movement into this by slowly with the breath pedaling through the heels. If you'd like to check out the length of your down dog, roll for the plank, bringing the shoulders over the wrist, hips in line with the shoulders more or less. That's about the right length for your body. Bend through the knees, take the hips back up, let the head go. Shifting the hips from side to side, take a few more pedals through the heels. Then, in your own time, start to settle into this. So keep a bend in your knees, even if you're able to straighten your legs. Keep the knees bent so that you can lift the heel, take the hips up even higher, and release the head. And if your head is a little droplet of water about to fall, don't use any energy holding it up, just let it go. Then with each exhale, we'll press your chest back closer to the tops of your feet, you hugging the navel in towards the spine, and we're here for a few breaths. Keep lifting the hips. To bring the toes together. And on the exhale, take the knees out wide, release them to the mat, sit your hips back towards your heels. You're in your child's pose. Rest. Let everything go, except for the breath. Keep visualizing the breath, moving up and down your spine. Let your heart melt closer to the mat with every exhale.
the next inhale, you'll come back to all fours. Tuck your toes. And exhale, lift your hips, you're back in downward facing dog. We'll invite a little more movement into this breath support. And come up onto the balls of your feet, up your chin towards your chest. And then find that rounding of the spine. So you start to roll forward bringing your shoulders over your wrists. And you'll unfurl into a plank pose, pressing through the heels, crown of the head, reaches forward. Your next exhale, bend through the knees, scoop the hips up and back. You're in a downward facing dog. So we'll keep moving like that with breath. Inhale, rolling forward into a plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. So I like to think of this as if you ever sit on the shore and watch the waves roll in and then back out. Think of your body as, as water and you're moving like that wave. Inhale to roll in. And exhale and back out. We'll take two more just like that on your own breath. We'll all meet back in our downward facing dog. We'll take a walk. Slowly start to walk your feet up to meet your hands. Once you get there, Keep a little bend in your knees. Just let your upper body hang. Maybe grab the opposite elbows. Bouncing, swaying a bit. And release the elbows. And roll up to a standing position. Once you get there, let's shrug the shoulders on an inhale, bringing forward and up towards the ears. On your exhale, squeezing the shoulder blades together behind you and releasing them down the back. Find a nice tall stance. This is your mountain pose. Breathing in, we'll take the hands up overhead. Breathing out, come into your forward fold. Breathing in, Bring the hands to the shins, or you can leave the fingertips on the earth, but find your flat back looking up halfway. Then on an exhale, bend through the knees, plant the hands, step back to your plank position. This time we'll hold for a moment in plank. We're gonna lower through our chaturanga. So press through the heels, hug the navel into the spine, and then Press the elbows straight back, lowering halfway. Come onto the tops of the feet, pull your heart forward, and press the shoulders down the back, up dog. Then roll over or flip the feet, and your back, and your down. I'm sure you got that, we're gonna do a couple more times for good measure. So inhale, come forward to plank. If Chaturanga felt like way too much, like what? Maybe you just bend the elbows a little bit. Shoot. We'll lower halfway if you can. And then come onto the tops of the feet. Lift through the heart. And back to your downward facing dog. Let's do that one more time on your own. Inhale forward to plank. 
in the elbow, slowing chaturanga. Coming to the tops of the feet, inhale, upward facing dog. And exhaling into your downward facing dog. Beautiful. Take an inhale here. Bring the toes together, knees out wide. Exhale into your child's pose. Inhale back to all fours, tuck the toes, find your way into a down dog. Bend to the knees, look forward. You can step or float to the top of your mat. Inhaling, find that flat back, look up halfway, exhale to fold. Inhale, drawing the hands overhead. Exhale, hands come to heart center. We'll move through that a couple more times. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale to look up, find your flat back. Exhale, bend through the knees, plant the hands, make your way back to plank and lower chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. We've got a couple of breaths here. Bend through the knees, look forward, exhale, step. Float, pop, to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhaling to fold. Inhale, bring the hands overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Last one of these. Inhale, bring the hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, a half lift. Exhale, plank the hands. Step back to plank and lower. Inhaling into your up dog. Exhaling for down dog. Then to the knees, look forward, bottom up the exhale, step, float, hop, levitate to the top of your mat. Inhaling, look up halfway, exhaling to fold. Inhaling, drawing the hands forward and up. Breathe the hands to heart center. Rest right here. On your next inhale, take the hands up. Exhale, breathing into your forward fold. You wanna stay in this fold. Let your belly rest on your thighs, bend the knees deeply. Maybe your chest even connects to your thighs. You'll wrap the arms around the lower legs. Just kind of hug into yourself, let your head go. Stretching out the backs of the legs, keep the belly connected to the thighs and start to lift your hips. I promise you there's no prize for straight legs, so that's not the goal. I'm looking for whatever stretch we can find through lifting the hips, keeping the belly and chest connected.
Maybe you can start to flatten out the spine. Release the hands. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, you can flow through your vinyasa. Plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. But just step right back to your downward facing dog, which is what I will be doing. On an inhale, let's take the right leg up, bend at the knee, open the hips, but keep your upper body square to the floor. That might require pressing the right shoulder down a little bit. Then you'll bring the knee into the chest, shoulders come over the wrists, and replacing the foot between your hands. Let's go ahead and drop the left knee. Place the weight in the left hand and we'll take the right hand forward up and back, just making a big circle, reaching back towards that back foot. So you can just wave at that back foot or if it's available to you, you can bend the back knee and grab the outer edge of the foot, pulling it in towards your heel. Are you finding a little more of a twist and a bit of a back bend? We're still breathing. Carefully release the foot if you have it. Hand comes back to the mat. Lengthen through that right leg. You might need to scoot the heel forward, flex the foot. Let's inhale through the heart, exhale to lower. Do that a couple more times. Inhale, lifting up, reaching the collarbone towards the toes, exhale to lower. Last time, inhale, find length, exhale, lower. Keep pulling the right hip back, keep flexing the right foot. And keep your hips over your left. Beautiful, you'll shift the weight into your right foot. Pick up the back knee, flatten the heel, and open up into a warrior two position. I'm gonna turn so that I'm facing you, but stay right in your warrior two. You'll reach up and back to reverse your warrior, stretching out the right side of the body. And then bring the right forearm to the right side. Take the left hand overhead. You're in a side angle pose. Coming back into your warrior two position. Straighten through the front leg. Then start to shift forward, reaching as far as you can before you just tip over into triangle pose. Circle the top hand forward and around. You'll find yourself in a wide leg forward fold. Take that half lift on an inhale and on an exhale, let it go. Turn the heels in, toes out, sit the hips down low and then start to roll up the upper body to stand. Let's take the arms out wide, 
we'll place the right elbow on top of the left. And then bend at the elbow so the back of the hands touch, or you can wrap them more so that the palms touch. Sit low. Imagine your back is flat against the wall. Lift the elbows up, pull the thumbs away from your face. You'll get a nice upper back stretch. Start to shift the weight from side to side a little bit. Inhale, lift this all up. Exhale, release, kick the heels out, lengthen through the legs, and fold. Breathe deeply. Hang out in your forward fold. We'll start to stretch through the hips, bending one knee and then the other. I think I will mirror you. So when you bend the right knee, the next time, let's turn the right toes out a bit, and you'll stay here. So you can come up. You want to make sure that the heel is connected to the mat at all times. Bring your hands to heart center. You may be right here. You can bring your hands to the earth for support. If you're able to keep the knee, the knee, the heel on the earth, maybe you lower up all the way to whatever your fullest expression of this pose is. Try to keep a tall spine. We'll release the hands. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, let's walk back over the right foot. Find that low lunge. Step back into plank. There's a vinyasa if you like, lowering halfway. Inhale, up dog. You can go straight into downward facing dog. We're all going to meet up there. Beautiful. Take a deep inhale. Bring your toes together, knees out wide, child's pose, rest. Inhale back into all fours. Exhale, make your way into a downward facing dog. On an inhale, take the left leg up, bend at the knee, open the hip, keep breathing. Maybe pressing that left shoulder down so. Let the shoulders stay square to the mat. And then bring the knee into the chest. Shoulders come over the wrist. Place the left foot between your hands. Rele we'll release the right knee. Press into the right hand and reach forward, up, and back. So once again, just wave, saying hello to that back foot. We're taking the outer edge pulling it in towards your seat. Keep opening up through the heart and finding a back bend. On an exhale, you'll release the foot. Lengthen through the left leg. Maybe shifting that heel forward a little bit, but keep your hips over the right knee. Inhale, half lift, exhaling to lower. We'll do that a couple more times. Inhale, drawing the collarbone forward, flattening up the spine. Exhale, lower. Last time, breathing in. 
and breathing out. We're here for a few breaths. Shifting the weight into the left foot. Tucking the right toes. Picking up that knee and then flattening the right foot. Open up into a warrior two position with your left knee bent. Inhale, you'll find the reverse warrior stretching out the left side of the body. Exhale, bring the forearm to the thigh, find your side angle pose. Let's breathe back on an inhale into warrior two. Straighten through the front leg and then start reaching forward. You've gone as far as you can. Bit of a re release into triangle pose. Reaching through the fingertips and the crown of the head. Circle the top hand forward, down, and around. Landing in our wide leg forward fold. Once again, inhale to look up halfway. Exhale to lower. Turn the heels in. That means the toes come out. Sit low. Roll the upper body up. Stand. Arms come out wide. This time we'll cross the left elbow on top of the right. And, and then maybe your palms kiss. Sit lower. Lift the elbows. Pull the thumbs away from your face. Eagle arms. Maybe shifting the weight side to side. Getting into the hips a little more. On an inhale, you'll lift the elbows up. Lift everything up. Maybe finding a little back bend. But on the exhale... Heels kick away, release into your forward fold. Take a little sway, let things go. Then we'll start to bend into one knee and then the other. Getting deeper into the hips. I will mirror you here once again. So this time we'll bend deeply into the left hip, maybe the left knee, maybe turning the toes out a little bit. So supporting yourself with your hands, maybe bringing your hands to heart center and then sitting as low as you can while keeping the heel on the mat. Breathing. When you're ready, let that go. Nice. We'll walk back over that left leg. Step back. Either right into your downward facing dog, which is what I'll be doing. Or you can come forward to a plank. Lower through Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Once again, we'll bring the toes together. Knees out wide. Take a wide knee pose. Keep visualizing the breath. Let your heart melt towards the, towards your mat.
Gather up your energy on an inhale and come to all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bend through the knees, look forward, bottom of the exhale. Find your way to the top of the mat. Spin through the knees deeply again. Once again, wrapping the arms around the lower legs. Let the head go. And then start to lift the hips. Once you've got them as high as they'll go, you can stay right here if you want a little more stretch from there. Start to press your collarbones forward, flattening out your spine. Release the arms. And let's roll ourselves up to a standing position. Beautiful. So we'll shift the weight into the left foot and bring the right knee up in, up towards the chest, crossing the leg over. We're setting up for Eagle Pose Garudasana. So sit the hips down and back. You'll take your arms out wide like a T and wrap, place the left elbow on top of the right. Bend at the elbows, maybe the palms. Kiss, sit lower, lift the elbows up, pull the thumbs away. Keep squeezing the thighs together, trying to keep the hips square. Breathe. We'll release the legs, keep the arms, and come back through our warrior three position. Stepping back into a high lunge. Inhale, lift the elbows. Exhale, you're going to hook your right elbow outside of your left thigh. So you're in a twist. And go ahead, bring the hands to prayer. Press hard through the back heel. Try to rotate the center of your chest up towards the hand. Release the hands to the mat. And then step back into your downward facing dog. Of course, you can take a vinyasa if you like. Otherwise, you'll just meet us right here. Inhale, bend the knees, look forward, exhale, make your way to the top of the mat. Make your way up to a standing position. I'm just going to turn around. Let's shrug the shoulders forward, up, and back, and just take a moment here. Shifting the weight into the right foot, we'll bring the left knee up into the chest, and then crossing over, squeezing the thighs together, sitting down, sitting back, taking the arms out wide. And then this time, crossing the right elbow on top of the left, bending at the elbows, maybe the palms. Kiss, keep sitting down, keep sitting back. 
Keep lifting the elbows, drawing the thumbs away. First, unraveling the legs. Then slowly coming through your warrior three position. Stepping back to a lunge. This time, hooking the left elbow outside the right thigh. And spine prayer. Stacking the elbows. And rotate your heart towards your hands. Keep pressing through the back heel. Keep breathing. You'll release the hands. Step back to downward facing dog. I think this may be our bit last vinyasa, so I'll take it with you breathing forward, blink, exhaling to lower, inhaling up dog, exhaling down dog. Take an inhale here, exhale, <coughs> release the knees. Rest. Roll up to sit. Nice job. You made it down to the mat. We'll come to sit. Take the legs out long in front of you. Let's bring the right sole of the foot into the thigh. And we're setting up for Shanu Shirshasana, of course. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, come forward, keeping the heart lifted. You've gone as far as you can. Release the hands. Let the shoulders round, release the head. And just be wherever you are in this photo. If your foot is close, of course you can grab onto it. But we're stretching, not reaching for anything. Just be where you are, focus on your breath. Try to breathe into any spaces where you feel any tightness. We'll roll up to sit. So you'll take your right ankle, place it on top of, place it above your left knee. Flex the foot. We're going to take a pigeon variation. Bring the sole of your left foot to the mat. Keep pressing that right knee down. Maybe you walk the foot in a little bit more. This may feel like one heck of a hip stretch, and you'll stay right here. If you want to go a little bit further, you can kind of cradle the lower leg, getting the foot into the crook of the elbow, and pulling it in towards the chest, try to keep the tall spine, and bring the bottom foot, the bottom shin to the earth for leverage. Rocking this leg a little bit. You may stay right here. This is plenty. Or you can start working the right shoulder behind the right thigh. 
This may feel like plenty. You can stay right here. Find a tall spine, or you can take the left hand, thumbs down, grab the outside of the foot, bring your right hand to the mat, and just play with lengthening through this leg. That would be your compass pose. We're going to come back the way we got into this, picking up all our friends along the way. So maybe you're here. Maybe you have the bent knee. And then we'll release the back of the left leg to the mat. Take both legs out long. Shake them out a little bit. Go ahead and bring the sole of the left foot into the right thigh. Find that tall spine. Inhale, bring the hands up overhead. Exhale, leading with the heart. Hinge at the hips. Come forward. Once you've gone as far as you can, release the hands, release the head. Release everything except for your control of the breath, maybe focusing on the exhales, seeing where you can let go. Nice roll and back up to a seated position. We'll take the left ankle, place it above the right knee, flex the foot, let this knee drop towards the earth. Start to bring, to bend the right knee. Sole of the foot to the mat. This can be a pretty intense hip stretch. So you may want to stay right here, moving side to side a little bit, stretching things out a little bit more, or you can cradle that foot, bring it in towards the chest. I would feel like I'm picking up a baby when I do this, hugging your shin in close to your body. Then if you're, you did on the other side, left shoulder behind the left thigh. You can stay right here. You can play with the lengthening through the leg. Once you've had enough of that, bringing your shin back in, placing it above the right knee, and then both legs out longer. Let's bring the soles of the feet together. Knees out wide. Bottle Cobbler's pose. Lift through the heart. Then exhale, come forward. Once you've gone as far as you can with that long, tall spine, go ahead and release. Let the head go. Making your way back up to sit. Let's bring the soles of our feet to the mat. Stretch 
stretching out the front of the body just a little bit. Let's bring the hands by the hips. Press into your hands. Feet are inner hip distance apart. And just find your tabletop, lifting the hips as high as you can. Maybe letting the head drop back, opening the throat. Bringing the hips back to the mat. Lifting through the heart. Since we're here, I feel like we should just take a little bit of boat pose, Navasana. Lift through the chest, bring the shins parallel to the earth. Maybe releasing the legs. Try to keep lifting through the heart. You can stay right here. If you want to go further, you can straighten the legs. And then let's release the feet. Take another opportunity to embrace ourselves, wrapping the arms around the shins. Give yourself a squeeze. Then curving through the spine, slowly with lots of control, make your way onto your back. We'll take a back bend. Walk your feet in enough so that maybe the, your fingertips graze your heels. Feet and knees are inner hip distance apart. You'll press into your feet, lifting the hips for bridge pose. Maybe walking the shoulder blades beneath you and interlacing the fingers, pressing that fist into the mat, lifting the hips even higher, chest coming towards the wall behind you. If you'd like to come into full wheel, and that is something that is within your practice, bring your hands by your ears and press up into your full wheel. you're ready, we'll all lower onto our back. Let's bring the soles of the feet together, knees out wide. Place one hand at the center of your heart, place one hand on your belly. There's no need to do more. However, if an inversion is really calling to you, and that's something that's part of your practice, go ahead and take that now. Maybe you'll turn over and get into a headstand. If you have a headstand practice in the center of the room, or headstand prep, or a shoulder stand. Me, I'm staying right here. It feels good.
Within the next few breaths, start to make your way out of your inversion. And into a counter pose. We'll all meet up here. Bringing our knees together. Hug them into the chest. And then take the knees, stack, or another variation if you prefer that, over to the right. Take your arms out wide like a C or maybe that system. Take your gaze over to the left. We're in a twist. Try to keep your left shoulder towards the mat. And then coming back through center, let's take this over to the other side. Gaze goes out to the right. Right shoulder moves towards the mat. Bringing the knees back in. Wrapping your arms around your shins. Giving yourself a little love. One last time for this practice, squeezing it in, maybe lifting your shoulder blades off the neck mat, bringing your nose towards your knee. And then we'll just release into your Shavasana. Take the legs out long, let the feet flop away. Hands away from your body, palms up. And everything is relaxing. You'll stay right here. Letting go of everything, including your control, the breath. let it take care of itself. For a moment, searching for any place that you may feel tension, any place that hasn't completely let go. And then try to release that. Imagine yourself just melting and disappearing into your mat. You're here for the next few moments, letting the benefits of today's practice settle in.
take an inhale through your nose and then gently release the breath through your mouth. Waking up the body, start to bring some movement to your fingers and your toes. Letting that transfer to your ankles and your wrists. Then slowly, maybe one leg at a time, bringing your knees in towards your chest again. And rolling over onto your right side. Take a moment here, let something go. Then using your hands to support, press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Just like we began, take a moment. Notice how you feel. Bringing your hands to heart center, maybe pressing the thumbs in towards the chest. Bowing to yourself, thanking yourself for spending time in this practice today. I thank you for practicing with me. Let's seal our practice with the sound of one ohm. Inhaling. Thank you so much for practicing with us. Thank you, Octavio. I can't wait to see you all again. Namaste.